like to welcome a few special guests this morning. We have Commissioner Anthony Johnson, Commissioner Phil Wilson, and Commissioner Carl Boyd. Thank you all for being here, as well as State Representative Mike Sparks. We just want to say how much we appreciate their partnership. They're always willing to step up and help us, whether it's an issue with the county or the state, and um, we couldn't do this without you. I'd also like to um, recognize those that I get to work with um, on a daily basis, which is our town council. We have um, Vice Mayor Mark Adkins, Council Member H.G. Cole, Council Member Tim Morrell, Councilwoman Raquel Peebles, Council Member Jerry Short and Council Member Steve Sullivan. I just want you all to know how hard these individuals work um, every day to make the town of Smyrna a better place and I appreciate the job you all do and getting to work with you all. I'd also like to recognize our town manager Brian Hercules, our town attorney Jeff Peach, our assistant town manager Todd Spearman and assistant town manager Rex Gaither. These, make up, these individuals make up our management team, but also included in that team is our department heads and our uh, directors. Thank you all for what you do on a daily basis to make Smyrna a better place to live, work, and play. And um, in addition to those individuals, I'd also like to thank our town employees. Those are the individuals who are out on the front lines every day, who are interacting with our citizens and we appreciate each one of them as well. At this time, I'm gonna turn it, oh, oh, I did forget. We have a couple of guests today. We have Patrick Kamak from the Rutherford County Chamber and Dominic Zabrinski, who is gonna to talk to us a little bit about our new project of Stewart's Landing, who our commissioners really went to bat for us and helped us make sure that that project was gonna happen here in the town of Smyrna. And thank you for doing that because it is a project that is very much needed. So at this point, I'm going to turn it over to, do you want to be called the new town manager now, the old town manager, or what? Just, so just still here town manager. Ju oh, <laughs> just still here town manager. Well, that's going to be for a long time to come. So the just still here town manager. Thank you, Mayor. And, you know, you, you've already mentioned this, but I would be remiss as town manager. Uh, two things real quick. Uh, first and foremost, the council and the mayor, uh, we appreciate the uh, the ability you give us to do the job. You set a vision, you approve our budget, and you let us go to work. Uh, and as you think about today, we're going to be reviewing what we've done this last year, and then we're going to be looking forward uh, towards the end of this program of what's the future. Uh, but trust me, none of this happens uh, without the employees, without the department heads, and the work they do on a daily basis. And cannot tell you how much I appreciate. Uh, I tell people that, you know, I've been in the workforce for 40 plus years and no doubt uh, the town of Smyrna is the best place I ever worked and I'm going to steal from Todd uh, because I believe the same thing. Uh, the reason it's the best place I've ever worked is the people. Uh, we have great employees and they're very dedicated and uh, they're very diligent in doing the things that we ask them to do to make the town of Smyrna a better place to live, work and play. I had a couple of projects I wanted to update you on just real quick. Most of you are familiar with Jefferson Pike, which started in March of 2011. With a completion date for spring of 2025, the total cost of this project was $61,044,027. We'll be adding some traffic signals as we look at this road come together, one at Nissan Drive and Sam Ridley, and then another one at Hickory Grove and, and at uh, 840. And then also at the 840 ramps, there will be some new uh, signalization that will be added. Um, the the uh, revised plans have added an extra lane on 840 off ramps. Phase one of the lake bridge has been opened and most of the old bridge has been removed. Currently we're about 90% on fill material. Uh, so you're going to begin to see the road take shape very quickly and where the new road system will, will actually operate. The other thing I want to share with you is Rocky Fork and McEwen. Uh, this is a project that the town initiated and uh, Kevin Rigsby and his group in planning were leading this for, the, for us in the county. But Rutherford County, Nolensville, Franklin, Brentwood, and Williamson County all came together to establish a route uh, to connect Interstate 24 at Enon Springs Road west, Rocky Fork Road to Interstate 65 at McEwen 
And as most of you know, that's also a place that we are diligently working towards uh, getting a interchange at uh, Enon Springs at I-24. So this will become a major connector arterial. Uh, if, if you think about it, for me, it's similar to that Bell Road connector between Brentwood and Antioch is what, what we're trying to achieve. A couple of other things that's happened this year, and uh, the town's been busy. Uh, we've had uh, we had our new Christmas lighting ceremony at the depot district this year. I think everybody enjoyed that. Tom Rose has had, uh, has assured me that next year it's going to be even bigger and better. Uh, I think they've uh, purchased some new stuff that we're going to see in the downtown area, and we're excited about that. We had the Volunteer of the Year banquet. That's something we look forward to every year. Uh, we appreciate everybody coming out and supporting that through our Parks Department. July 4th, again, was a super event, and Chief always, uh, he amazes me. Not only does he know how many uh, mortars will be fired, but he counts them and makes sure that we get full credit for everything we do out there. But uh, it's amazing to see, what, Chief, eight to 10,000 people in the park watching fireworks and enjoying themselves. Um, it's just a great, great opportunity for our community. Simply Smyrna, uh, we just finished uh, recently a sip, uh, in the spring the Simply Smyrna uh, event. It's always fun to come out and be in the depot district and see our friends and, and share some time uh, with our neighbors. Depot Days, that was another event. Again, we just completed that uh, event. Uh, starts off with a car show and then some time downtown for people to, to gather and enjoy some music and food and, and fellowship. Something that we're very proud of and I think Chief this is our second year back since COVID. We had our Fire and Police Youth Academy, and I, I will tell you it is a highlight for me to get to go out, and I know the mayor and I went out and spoke to the kids. Uh, it's just very exciting to watch these kids learn a little bit about our fire department, our police department, and uh, building a relationship that hopefully will go forward for them to understand that these folks are here to support them, to help them, and not to be afraid of them. Top Gun Night Run, again, that's an event that we've put together now. I think this was our fourth annual. We missed a year with COVID, but uh, we had uh, close to 700, I think, folks that uh, actually came out and ran with us and had our uh, best fundraising of the year. Again, remember all the dollars from the Coos Run uh, go to support the uh, memorial. So we use no tax dollars to offset any maintenance costs and stuff for the memorial. And that is a highlight for our community. Halloween in the park, we just uh, fixed to do another one in fact, so we'll be talking about that again next year, but that's always a fun time. And uh, gosh, again, probably close, what, 10,000 kids out there uh, doing uh, hay rides and bonfires and different games and costume uh, uh, competitions and those kind of things, and everybody has a good time. And then uh, again, one we just, we completed last year, but we're about ready to get uh, geared up to do another one, and that's our Christmas parade. Uh, we always look forward to the Christmas parade. It's a great time to, to, to see our community come out and support uh, the food bank. Uh, you know, we have, have used that as a way to garner food back for our food bank. And gosh, uh, between the uh, fire department's food uh, uh, drive and then what we do with the, uh, the uh, uh, parade, I think we've garnered somewhere close to about 90,000 items for the food bank. So that's something we're very, very proud of. So, Mayor? Um, I want to talk a little bit about growth. I'm sure nobody here knew that the town of Smyrna was growing at all, but um, we are, and we have had 555 new businesses opened this past, uh, over the past year, and nine annexation requests reviewed, 26 rezoning requests reviewed, 37 subdivision plats reviewed, and 53 site plans reviewed. So, been a little bit busy. Um, you know, one of the things that we have sometimes is that we have some challenges running a town government. And I wanted you all to know some of the frustrations we feel are things that are out of our control, such as supply chain issues. And issues in the supply chain have caused delays in some of our departments. And to give you all a few examples of our supply chain issues, PVC conduit and pull boxes for street lights and traffic signals, ordering and receiving parts for the apparatus. A hydraulic pump was ordered for a tower, for tower one three months ago, and we're still waiting on the pump. Utility, uh, workman utility vehicle, we issued a PO for that in September of 2022, and we're still waiting on delivery. 
Park equipment with large orders such as benches, tables, trash receptacles um, continue to be delayed for Mike and his department. We're currently awaiting seven vehicles that were ordered in 2022 and our utilities continue to experience delays in residential and commercial meters. We're just like all the other businesses out there as well. There are things that are out of our control, but we're making the best of it and trying to continue to put out a good product for the town of Smyrna and for our citizens. So um, we just want the department heads to know we understand what you're going through and um, we want the citizens to know, please be patient. There's some things that we can't control. Okay, Mayor, let's talk about the public safety accomplishments. Our fire department, the fire department uh, broke ground on a new station, Fire Station 4. Uh, this state-of-the-art facility is slated to open in fall of 2024, and we did have a groundbreaking recently on that. We're very excited. The fire department is looking forward to the completion of the 1,500-square-foot addition to Station 1. Uh, that may take the, the, the cake and uh, override the uh, Lowry Street uh, time frame with the 1,500-square-foot bunkhouse but uh, we are getting very close to finishing that up the fire department also updated their management system to support the national fire incident reporting uh, that's some new software that will help us be a little better at what we do and the fire department also received a new 107 foot uh, aerial apparatus we are currently training on the unit uh, the department is working on the, the communications i think they've you know, the radios have been installed on that unit and we're just waiting on a few pieces of equipment to arrive and that uh, that truck will go into service and once it does it will take the it will become the new ladder one uh, and we'll put ladder one uh, the old ladder one in reserve so uh, very excited about that the police department uh, had an exciting year in the police department we uh, hired a new police chief jason Irvin. jason's with us this morning we appreciate you being here and the work you're doing but we also, as we got a new chief, he had some new ideas and some things for us to look at. So we are restructuring the department. We added two new assistant chiefs uh, with a lot of experience and those promotions throughout the department on all ranks. Uh, the uh, positions and promotions were implemented to address the current project projected growth. Improvements were made to the police department building and grounds, including a new parking lot with a security fence uh, and some aesthetics that were updated inside the building. Uh, the department hired a public safety counselor. This is something we're very proud of for mental health and wellness for our officers, both in the police and the fire department. And uh, this position is already paying dividends for us. And we appreciate the work that Amanda's doing. Um, so next, we're going to go into some of the other departments. And uh, the mayor and I will kind of pass this back and forth. But I'll start out with finance. Uh, we had a great year. Our, our audit for FY23 is on track to be concluded with an unmodified uh, opinion. This is the highest opinion available. And we spent over $6 million in grant funds within the town this year, and uh, they tracked all of those and made sure we stayed in compliance. We received our second tranche of American Rescue grant funds, including interest earned. This brings the total of our ARP funds to $7.3 million. These funds have been committed towards the construction of that new fire station we talked about a moment ago. Something we're very proud of and something the mayor has been pushing us for a long time to achieve. We did get the Moody's Investor Service upgrade. The town has now uh, moved from being a AA1 to a AAA bond rating and that's something we're very proud of. And, Rex and his team have done a great job to uh, control our expenses and keep us in a line to earn that. The AAA status is the highest rating that can be assigned to any issuer of debt. So as we go to the market from time to time, we will be uh, reaping the rewards of better finance rates. This increase reflects the uh, town's multi-year trend to strong financial performance that resulted in the uh, accumulation of substantial reserves. It also reflects the town's strong economic growth. We'll be hearing a little bit about that in a few minutes. Our rising population and our modest low-term uh, liability ratios. We received the GFOA certificate, Award of Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting. This is the highest form of recognition uh, of excellence in governmental accounting. It involves a 45-page checklist that requires uh, with requirements. An average of only 9% of the Tennessee cities receives this award. Among the top 20, we were among the top 25% of the uh, Tennessee cities to file our annual budget within 15 days of adoption. So again, just very financially stable and uh, very responsible. 
Within our HR department, um, a lot of the question I have a lot of times when we're out in the public is, how many employees do you have in the town of Smyrna? Well, currently we have 426 full-time employees, 39 part-time, and 18 seasonal employees. One of the things that council and administration have been adamant about is that we want to make sure that we're taking care of the employees that we have here at the town of Smyrna. And common compensation strategies often target a market average on salaries um, when setting pay levels for jobs. But one of the things that the town continues to try to do is to make sure that all of our jobs are paid above the market average. And what we strive to do is that we strive to meet a 30% or better when compared to other municipalities across the state. And we hope that this helps us to attract the best in the town of Smyrna, but not only attract the best, but retain, retain the best and most talented employees that we can. Um, also, the town of Smyrna continues to lead our market in benefits for employees. I think if you'll talk to our employees, you'll find that we have some of the best benefits there are. In 2023, we adopted uh, the paid family leave program, which allows employees to spend time with their immediate family following the birth or the adoption of a child or to care for a sick family member without having to worry about how to financially cover that time that they're off. The program provides up to six weeks of paid time leave per year for qualifying employees. The town also created the Retiree Health Reimbursement Account, which allows for retirees age 62 or older to be reimbursed for health insurance premiums until they're eligible for Medicare at age 65. Um, one thing that I'm really proud of our employees is the United Way campaign that they take on every year. This past year, they raised $74,000 for the annual charity Golf Scramble to benefit nonprofits across Rutherford County. Our employees know that there are people out in our community that need help, and they want to make sure that we're giving back to the community, and they, we do this through the United Way. The next department we're going to highlight is Treasury. This is a very active department. These folks, they're really our front line as far as customer service and the, the ladies that work up there. Um, they do a great job for us, but they had uh, 47,447 customers in person come through the door. They answered 23,399 phone calls, processed 53,862 utility payments in-house, and processed 10,755 miscellaneous payments in-house. Those would be business taxes and those kind of things that we also render. They accepted 555, 555 applications for new businesses, and they renewed 2,409 business license. Jenny, uh, that's you and four people, right? Five people. Four people. Yep, four people and you. So that's a lot of work, and we do appreciate what our Treasury Department does. Uh, again, in the customer service and then bringing in that uh, cash flow for us. Information technologies. Uh, cybersecurity has been a hot button in that area, and it continues to be a primary focus for the information services teams. We have improved employee security awareness through constant communication and implementation of a new education tool that also provides citizens and families access to professional cybersecurity education, uh, even to the extent that I know a few people have gone, oh no, is it time to watch another one of those videos? But let me tell you, they really help. And I, I know talking with Carl, uh, where's, there's been several times that uh, an employee has now recognized an email to be something that was trying to get into our system and brought that to the IT department's uh, uh, attention, so we appreciate that. The Information Service Department completed a reorganization to ensure the team is aligned with and prepared to meet the growing technology needs for the town of Smyrna. Additionally, the Information Services team partnered with the Fire Department as we implemented the new software system to manage the records of all department activities through the NFIRS reporting. So they were very active working with the Fire Chief. Information Services also partnered with us with the Public Works to, the, to support the further enhancement of the I-24 corridor system. 
This included a complete redesign and segmentation of the traffic system servers and network to increase efficiency and security. Also worked with our team members at TDOT to make sure that they had access to get in, but also uh, making sure it was a very secured way for them to get into our system in the need to move traffic off the interstate. The team developed and implemented a new attendance system for our employees. Um, I'm learning how to use that uh, on a week, bi-weekly basis now. I think it's this week, right? Uh, but it's also a more secure system for our employees to enter their data. So we appreciate what they're doing there. In the Public Works Department this year, the stormwater uh, department completed the repairs at Fire Hall 5 to prevent flooding on Rock Springs Road. I think any of us that have lived here for a while know that that can sometimes be an issue. Um, we, through the Public Works Department, applied for and obtained grant funding from TDOT funded projects obtaining an additional $1.4 million for the ITS Phase 3, 4, and 5 project. And we're currently out to bid on this final phase to complete our ITS system. I would say that kind of rivals the Lowry Street project and the fire station in regards to completion, I would say. Tom, yes, no? You wouldn't know anything about that? Got that, got it. Um, okay, so let's make a bet. Are we going to be talking about this next year? Yes or no? Oh, in past tense. Okay, so everybody's heard it. It's past tense next year. Traffic operations and public works oversaw construction of the new traffic signal at Amelville Road and One Mile Lane and activation of the new signal at Rock Springs Road and Waldron Road. And hopefully this time next year we'll be talking about a flashing yellow light at Amelville. We're going to talk about upcoming things at the end, Mayor. Oh, okay. Remember? Okay, so, so I've, stole, I've stolen your thunder about the flashing yellow light. Um, we also organized the 15th annual Boat Day event with over 400 attendees participating in kayaking, canoeing, and educational outreach. And I will say this is an event I think that a lot of the community really gets to come out and enjoy. Let's move a little bit to Parks and Rec, Mike Moss's department. Our Freedom Playground restroom facility um, completion. This project was a joint effort between the town of Smyrna and our local Rotary Club. The restroom facility is located adjacent to our new Freedom Playground and follows the color scheme of the playground and the Captain Jeff Coos Memorial. The building features our typical male and female restrooms, but the thing we're most proud of is the family restroom that has the adult changing table. Um, I don't think each one of us think about those things if you don't have to deal with that on a daily basis, but for those families that need access to an adult changing table, I think this makes a huge difference for citizens in our community. Um, it also has a porch on the front and a water station with a bottle filler. Um, Lee Victory Recreation Park tennis court renovation is in progress and this project's underway and scheduled for completion in the late fall of 2023. That means really soon. The project includes a new surface, new net post and nets and color coding. The adult tennis league continues to thrive and school use continues to be really strong with those courts. Our Cedar Stone uh, Park Tennis and Pickleball Courts uh, is a grant project and is in the final stage of design. The Town of Smyrna received TDEC grant, a TDEC grant to continue uh, to construct our tennis and pickleball courts at Cedar Stone Park. The project will include six tennis courts and six separate pickleball courts. The town staff and engineers continue to work through our grant process, which um, if any of you all have done grants, you know sometimes it can be a tad bit long. Um, TDEX currently reviewing our plans for the project and the town plans to provide the bid project after TDEC um, approves our plans. We expect, we expect the project to take about six to nine months after construction begins. And I will say we are hearing almost on a daily basis, do we have pickleball, do we have pickleball, do we have pickleball. Paving and trail improvements. In recent years, the town's made a significant effort to repave multiple trails, parking lots, and greenways, which I think the town of Smyrna is known for. The Rotary Soccer Park walking trail was repaved this past summer, and the EA Victory Shelter parking lot was recently constructed and paved. Through the paving improvement projects, the town has handicap accessible parking spaces while also improving trail grades for better accessibility. The remaining projects this fiscal year include repaving the Gregory Mill walking trail and the parking lot at Paul John's Neighborhood Park. Our Cedar Stone restroom project is in progress. The project's underway and about 30% complete. 
The facility is located between the existing main playground and the future tennis and pickleball courts and the building um, includes your typical restrooms, a family restroom and a porch and water station with the bottle filler like we have at Lee Victory. And I think um, those that use the park out there, it'll be nice because they won't have to make their way all the way into the baseball fields to use the restroom. Our Steeter Stone Park Phase 2 design is mostly complete. Um, our town leadership has highlighted the importance of the next Phase 2 of Cedar Stone Park in addition to the tennis and pickleball courts mentioned. Phase 2 will include additional youth baseball complex with turf surfaces, walking trail, LED lighting, a park shelter, playground area, additional restrooms and associated parking. The majority of the design has been completed and the goal is to be prepared to bid the project when the town funds the project. I would say um, Cedar Stone Park is one of the gyms we have in the town of Smyrna and um, once people play there, they really don't want to play at another park. Uh, our park playgrounds are in design. The existing budget includes funding five additional playgrounds to be added to the park system. Four of the playgrounds will be installed near picnic shelters at Sharp Springs Park and a playground will be installed at Gregory Mill Park as well. Playgrounds not only provide a play area but also highlight health and wellness for our youth. So as those individuals are renting our shelters, they'll also be able to um, let kids play right there close to where the shelter rental will be. So Brian, I think you're going to talk a little bit about building safety. Building safety, sometimes commonly known as our codes department. They issued 619 permits for new construction, 1,801 electrical permits for new construction, performed 6,191 building inspections and 4,962 electrical inspections. The first nine months of 2023, over 14 million square feet of residential property permits for a valuation of $110,560,000 and 1.384 square million square feet of commercial uh, permits with a valuation of $101,574,000. So you can see we continue to grow. Uh, continued expansion of the services online, including building and electrical permits has been, and plans review has been very important to our codes department and making sure that we're working uh, with our, our building community and the developers and the builders. So uh, great job being done there. Anybody knows that um, a good town is a town that's always planning and we have a planning department that does a really great job and this year um, they completed the Rocky Fork Road McEwen Drive corridor study which Brian talked a little bit about and added the proposed route to the thoroughfare plan. They completed and adopted the new FEMA ordinance and flood maps and amended and updated the subdivision regulations. And Brian, I think you're going to introduce yes. a special guest. Uh, it's time to have a guest and I would like to introduce uh, Patrick K. Mack. Patrick is a young man that I've known for a long time, worked with him a little bit in economic development and uh, he uh, came in and filled a deficit that the chamber had been uh, having in the economic development world and uh, is doing a great job as Senior Vice President of Economic Development. So Patrick, if you come up and share some information with us. Thanks, Brian. Uh, Brian's referring to the big shoes I had to fill when I took over for him uh, five <laughs> years ago in this role. And so uh, thank you so much for, for having me. We uh, just on a day-to-day -day basis uh, always appreciate the partnership with with Smyrna um, I'd like to uh, my name is Patrick Kamak I'm speaking on behalf of the Chamber of Commerce I do economic development there uh, but I wanted to focus on workforce development economic development and tourism real quick and share some highlights with the workforce development we have a full-time uh, team of three people that are working on a day-to-day -day basis uh, mostly with our school system and so we uh, focus element in elementary and middle schools on increasing awareness and excitement about careers uh, to these students and we really focus in workforce development on, on a couple of careers in industries, manufacturing, supply chain, healthcare and construction. And then with the high school side, we really focus on dual enro enrollment and job opportunities for these high school students and graduating high school students. So that's where the focus lies. Uh, we, we would like to invite all of our industrial, all of our employers uh, to our annual We Grow Talent Summit meeting that we hold for in our businesses at Malo Community, Malo State Community College, November 3rd. We'll have a keynote speaker talking about uh, artificial intelligence, how that could be used in the workplace, and also connect our employers with other organizations that can help them uh, hire and find talent. 
On the economic development side, we have businesses, as you can see with all the new businesses here, we have new businesses and existing businesses that continue to invest and see the opportunity in Smyrna. Uh, two major projects that we're uh, very happy to see uh, announced recently is uh, Nissan announced last year that they want to be here at least another 20 years and invest billions of dollars in, in, in their existing plants. So we're very excited about that. And, and also, right next door to them, Envision, the manufacturing of battery systems, uh, also announced a similar commitment to 15, 20 years at least that they want to be here. And they announced uh, over 200 jobs, over $300 million of investment that they plan to make here. So very excited to see that. And then we also continue to work on uh, filling high quality jobs in the industrial spec developments going up in Smyrna, including Creekside Logistics and Prologis South Park. And so several new leases are happening in those. We continue to work with those developers in finding high quality jobs. And lastly, tourism continues to grow. Uh, last year in 2022, tourism brought almost $750 million directly to Rutherford County. And that resulted in $72 million in direct state and local taxes. And so that's a 17% increase over the last year, which is exciting. And that $72 million in direct state and local taxes, that offsets about over $600 per resident in Rutherford County. So that obviously diverses uh, the tax burden away from our residents and, and businesses, which we're excited about. So again, thank you for your partnership. Thank you for having me and everything. Uh, we, anything we can do for you, please let us know. And uh, I'll hand it back to you. Thank you, Patrick. And the word partnership was used, and it truly is a partnership, and uh, the Chamber is a great resource for us, and we appreciate all the work they do in all the different divisions, from tourism to economic development, and uh, thank you, and make sure Paul knows we, we appreciate him sending you instead of him coming. <laughs> so, okay. uh, the next thing I want to talk about is utilities a little bit. Um, I want to share a couple of projects that are ongoing with us right now. Or, or one ongoing and one we've just completed, I guess, more, more appropriately said, but talked a little bit about Jefferson Pike a while ago, and with Jefferson Pike, uh, the road, uh, the utilities is working on that uh, uh, project as well with water, sewer, and gas installation currently under construction. The water line will be upgraded within the project to meet the projected future demand and fire flow requirements. Sewer is a new installation out to 840, and it will consist of a mix of lift stations, force main, and gravity uh, flow. Gas is also new as, as far as being installed out to 840. will include a high pressure gas main to serve future and current loads as well. And all utilities will be extended to 840. Completion of the utilities uh, work depending, will depend on the timing of the new bridge on Jefferson Pike since the utilities will hang on that new bridge. Gas is approximately 75% completed and water and sewer are about 80% completed to date, and we anticipate completion of the utilities in the spring of 2024. So the utilities will be there ahead of the road, of course, or the, the opening of the road. The other one that we just completed was a five mile extension of sewer on the Olive Branch uh, sewer, sewer line. Uh, we were happy to get that project completed this past year, and uh, the only thing we lack like now, and we should be finished by the fall of this year, will be the cleanup uh, that's left out there after all the, all the construction work. As we talk about these projects, these are the new things. These are things that are opening for the future. But one of the most important things for us to do is also to make sure that we're maintaining uh, good utilities in our current areas. If you think about Smyrna and the way Smyrna was developed, uh, you know, with the base here in the 70s and the 60s, a lot of the work was done in the downtown area. A lot of it is old, 30, 40, 50 years old. So a lot of rehab projects have been going on, and I want to share a couple of those with you because I'm sure most of you have seen some of the construction. You saw some of it when you came in the, to the uh, SOAC this morning. Uh, we're uh, updating a water line out there right now, and there's some water and sewer projects. So uh, uh, the, the rest of Basin A, including Rock Springs trunk line, this project consists of rehabbing sewer man mains, manholes, and service connections. This will take place in the area of Rock Springs. Uh, following the creek from Branch Creek to Sam Davis and also Main Street, Gracie, Adams, Jackson, and Monroe, consisting of approximately 7,300 feet of rehab by a mix of pipe bursting, open cut replacement, pipelining, manhole repair and replacement. Currently, the town is working on easement acquisition, and the project is expected to be bid in the spring of 2024. 
with an anticipated construction time of 12 months. The project is going to be funded uh, through the American Rescue Plan grant with a 30% match. North Lowry Water Model Project, Phase 2A. Uh, this project consists of upgrading the water line by open cut pipe bursting and uh, beginning with uh, the road bore at Sam Ridley Parkway near the event center, which again, you, you saw this morning when you came in. That line will be coming down Nolan and up Lowry to uh, Moore Avenue and uh, approximately 3,700 feet of 16 inch main. Uh, construction has begun and the project is anticipated to take about six months to complete. This will increase the fire flow and capacity in those areas. There will be some lane closures uh, associated with this project, so uh, be aware in that area there will be some lane closures. Uh, the North Lowry Water Model Project, which is Phase 2B, this project consists of upgrading the water line by open cut pipe bursting beginning at North Lowry at Mon uh, Moore Avenue and uh, tying in near Jackson Street, also going around Mitchell Avenue and Maple View and down Maple View to tie in at Sam Davis. Again, it's approximately 3,700 feet of 16 and 12 inch main. Phase 2B will bid early 24 and expected uh, be, uh, construction to start in the spring of 2024. And it is anticipated to take about six months to complete that project as well. Uh, this again will increase fire flow and capacity in those areas and there will be some lane closures associated with this project. Completed projects include Sam Ridley Weekly Lane Water uh, Upgrade. Uh, that portion of the project consisted of uh, about a 3,000 foot 24 inch water main from Jefferson Pike just past G Street. You may have seen some of that work going on. It's completed now. And again, that increases the volume and the fire flow for those areas. The weekly lane portion of the project consisted of upgrading the water line in approximately 3,100 feet of 12 inch water main from Swan Drive to 11th Avenue. So that project uh, was funded by SRF um, uh, grant money and, uh, and it has been completed. Well, it's actually an SRF loan, I should say. It's not grant. Um, so switching over to the sewer rehab projects, Basin A8 and A9, this consists of rehabbing sewer mains, manholes, and service connections. This will take place in the area of Morton, Hicks, Belfield, Front Street, and Highland and consist of approximately 4,800 uh, feet of rehab by a mix of pipe bursting, open cut replacement, pipe lining, and 23 manholes will be replaced and installed, and installation of six new manholes. This project, again, is through the SRF uh, funding, which is a uh, low interest uh, loan that we have achieved uh, from the state. So you can see there's a lot of work going on in the downtown areas uh, to upgrade those services to make sure that we're prepared for the future. As most of you have noticed, there's a lot of things going on in the downtown area. Uh, a lot of new growth, a lot of updated growth, and we want to make sure that we're keeping those people safe uh, with fire flow, and we're also wanting to make sure that all the utilities work uh, when they need them. Well, and hopefully what people can see with this is we're not just fo focusing on the new parts of town, that we're also looking at those individuals that have been here and been the foundation of our community. So. Um, let's move to engineering. Charles. Um, Exit 66 Sam Ridley Interchange Project is scheduled to bid in 20, March of 2024. The project will include widening of the ramps and a new signal on the west side of I-24. Completed and ongoing project updates. Lee Victory Recreation Park entrance that you all got to see when you came in today was completed in August of 2023. Lowry Street Phase 1 construction was completed in June of 2023. Were you glad of that, Charles? Yes, ma'am. Very glad. I, I, I had a feeling you were. Um, I think you dreaded it every time it got brought up at a council meeting, didn't you? Uh, then we had the Jeannie Lane extension construction that began October of 2022 with completion scheduled for June of 2024, which um, I think will make travel along Sam Ridley even better because you'll be able to use the side street of Jeannie Lane. Spring Hill Drive extension construction began in December of 22 with completion scheduled for March of 24, which will really help out there at the schools. Sam Ridley at Old Nashville Highway Intersection Improvements project, project is currently in the final stages of review by TDOT before getting the construction notice to proceed to bid the project. 
The request for additional construction funding has been approved by the GNRC, so I think once we get that um, intersection taken care of, it'll sure make Sam Ridley Parkway uh, much more manageable. The Tridon Bridge replacement project construction began in May of 2023 with completion scheduled for substantial completion by December of this year. Brian, I think we have another yeah, guest. At this time, I'd like to call on Dominic Zabriski. Uh, he's going to talk about a project that we're very excited about. Uh, and again, the mayor mentioned we had some uh, great help with our county commission this last uh, week uh, putting a TIF in place. Uh, to help them, but uh, this is a project that I think we're all going to be proud to see in, in Smyrna. And Dominic, if you'll come up and share a little bit about the vision you have. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Once again, my name is Dominic Zabriski. I'm with Equitable Property Company based in Nashville. Um, as Brian mentioned, we've been working with uh, the city and the mayor's office for almost 12 months now to create uh, more of a walkable town center for the city of Sm for the town of Smyrna. Um, this property is located just south of Motlow State Community College. Uh, it's been it's a property that the the town has owned for close to 30 years now, um, and we're very excited about the opportunity to be a part of the development and bring something new to the town of Smyrna. Um, this project will include over 280,000 square feet of retail space, 240,000 square feet of office space, 240 hotel rooms, and 75 high-end residential condominium units. It's a similar development. Um, we have similar land planners as uh, Berry Farms, not as much residential as Berry Farms has, or McEwen Town Center in Franklin. And the idea is to be able to recruit and retain businesses, particularly retailers, um, so that the residents of Smyrna can shop here locally rather than having to drive to Nashville, Franklin, or Murfreesboro to shop at some of these businesses. Um, uh, in the coming months, we're excited to, to announce some of the name of, of these retailers. Um, many of these tenants will be new to the area. Uh, I just want to compliment the, the town, the mayor's office, city planning, um, the, the experience that we've had working with you guys over the last 12 months has just been incredible. I've, I've worked in Memphis, Nashville, Knoxville, Chattanooga, throughout the state of, of Tennessee, and it's just refreshing to work with employees that are willing to help, responsive. It's, it's just it's wonderful, it's something we haven't seen in a long time and we're just excited to be able to build something and be a, a lasting long-term uh, part of the community here. Um, we just, we look forward to working with you guys and creating something special for the town of Smyrna. Great. Thank you, Dominic. Okay, at this time, we're going to talk a little bit about our uh, courts and probation. So I just wanted to share with you, probation department serves an average of 415 clients per month, and we're or working on expanding the classes that probation will offer. Uh, uh, going to the judicial court clerk's office, uh, establishing a process to remotely issue warrants and search warrants, as well as the ability to speak to defendants via video to set bonds and bond conditions. Remote on-call has shown an average reduction of seven hours of overtime pay per period, estimating savings in the year time to uh, over 180 hours of overtime. Uh, continuing to utilize the new court software to streamline workload, initiate, initiated this year the function of automate, um, uh, the issuance of warrants, uh, numbers which eliminated the need for additional software for tracking and logging of warrants issued. Streamline the payment plan process, which has increased the number of defendants making payments the day of court. Utilizing the court software to send notices via text and email reminders when payments are past due, even appearances is not required in court. Um, the option also allows us to notify individuals when there is cancellation of traffic school or court uh, sessions in the event of inclement weather. Online collections is over 260,000, reducing the in-person traffic as well as phone calls to, 
just make a payment and establish additional options for days and times to attend traffic school. Creating a wider selection of variety of traffic school options has been popular with those needing to attend the uh, traffic schools. And as most of you know, this, this, the uh, General Sessions court side of our court system is something that is being reviewed by our town council uh, for the possibility of, of a referendum going to the citizens. And uh, we'll be continuing to update you as we go through those processes. Let's talk a little bit about golf, something that HG loves to go out and do on a regular basis. Uh, the Smyrna Golf Course prides itself on maintaining excellence on the greens with quality equipment. We updated uh, to the golf nail point of sale system, a cloud-based point of sale credit card system in an effort to reduce credit card convenience fees and how HG and I are both really sorry for any problems with the greens after we played. Um, additionally, we increased regulation rounds by 9.7% and executive rounds by 17%. Um, events that have been held at the golf course, the golf course hosted the ninth annual drive chip, chip and putt qualifier, the 24th annual Special Olympic State Championship, the 23rd annual First Tee Program, and hosted the annual United Way golf event. The golf course definitely adds to the quality of life here in the town of Smyrna and how we appreciate all that you and your staff do to make that happen. You know, Mayor, I, I want to say something about the golf course as well, and, and you hit on it. It's, it's quality of life. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're actually in a time where we're seeing golf courses close. I, I was driving by yesterday afternoon in the VA hospital, which was a place where a lot of folks would go and play nine holes of golf at a very reasonable rate, uh, has been closed down. I know there's another golf course uh, close to us that has recently closed down. And uh, I just want to compliment Hal and his staff, the work they do to provide that quality of life experience. Uh, and I want to brag on them a minute. Uh, Hal and I have had many discussions over the last five years about the golf course and what we can do to render not only service, to, but make the experience a better uh, opportunity. And you know everything from adding the foot golf and fling golf and all those kind of things that we've done, uh, something I'm very proud of. And, and I know Hal has worked very hard at this. Uh, we have finished the last two years at our golf course in the black. Uh, which means that uh, we did not have to offset taxpayer dollars to operate that golf course. It's self-sustaining, and uh, that's a goal that he's had uh, for many years, and it's something we've been working on, and how you've done a great job managing that golf course and keeping it something that the community can be proud of and can also be used in the quality of life experience. And if you haven't had a chance to go out to a Special Olympics or a First Tee uh, project, you know, all the rounds of golf that, that come through there that people enjoy on a daily basis, it's going out and seeing those things that makes it important for us to have this golf course uh, for those children and the, the, uh, the things that they learn and the, the, uh, the experience that they have. So, Hal, thank you for what you do. Talk about the event center. That's where we're at today. Served 19,875 buffet, buffet meals during FY23 hosted, this is what I'm most excited about, 276 special events in this last year. Uh, you think about how many days there are in a year, and we've got 276 uh, special events, everything from uh, business meetings to wedding receptions to children's birthdays and uh, all those things. And those are, that's the reason this center exists, is to make sure that we're providing those services here in our community so they don't have to go to Nashville or Murfreesboro to find that event center. So a great job being done down here. And we appreciate, uh, you know, Karen Cawthorn came down here to work with us this past year. She was probably uh, one of the best hires we've made. Uh, that, that woman is full of energy and she knows everybody in the hospitality business and she is working that system hard to make sure that we're getting our part of it. So Karen, we appreciate you. I want to talk a little bit about awards and recognitions that we've received over this past year. And these awards and recognitions are 100% due to because of the employees that we have here in the town of Smyrna. And so um, I just want to give a few of the shout outs that we've gotten from across the country. In June of 2023, the town of Smyrna announced that Smyrna was selected as the only city in the town of, in the town in the 
the only city in Tennessee to receive Fortune Magazine's coveted 50 best places to live for families in 2023. In October of 23, the Smyrna Outdoor Adventure Center was selected by Bloomberg TV's One of the World's Greatest. This summer, Bloomberg reached out regarding the SOAC and filmed a segment for October. The previously highlighted companies and organizations included Procter & Gamble, NASCAR, Samsung, Dow, 3M, and the Coca-Cola Company. So I'd say we're right up there with some of the best. In July, the Town of Smyrna received the Tennessee Municipal League's Excellence in Governance Award. The award recognizes Smyrna's commitment to efficient and effective government practices that enhance the quality of life and improve municipal service delivery and leverage economic assets. Each year, the Tennessee Municipal League honors cities throughout the state for overall excellence, improvement, specific outstanding uh, programs and departments and accomplishments. So we were really excited to receive these awards on behalf of the town of Smyrna, but I just want you all to know it's because of the work that you all do on a daily basis that we were able to receive these. So we've talked a little bit about what we've done. What we've done. What about what we're getting ready to do? Anything with that? Well, there's a few things I wanted to share, and I, I thought the first one I, I would just kind of give the introduction and I'd let you talk about it. Right. There's something that uh, we're very excited about for this holiday season that uh, we're going to have here at the uh, uh, SOAC and the event center uh, that's going to be taking place out in the parking lot, I think. So you want to talk about that, Mayor? I would like to talk a little bit about that. One of the things that we strive as a council to provide is quality of life and experiences for individuals and families. And so we had been seeing um, different communities that had ice skating rinks. And so I'll be honest, I've been hounding Brian pretty hard over the last couple of years. What about an ice skating rink? What about an ice skating rink? And there was quite a bit of expense and he came back from ICSC, ICSC in Vegas and he didn't tell me initially, he had to do a little research because I know he didn't want to get me excited about it because then I would hound him even more about it. And um, he found one that is a synthetic ice skating rink. Do you want to talk a little bit about what it's like? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a synthetic rink. Uh, it, they say that it skates just like regular ice, and it's kind of an interesting process. It's these uh, uh, sheets of, of, of ice that come together and make the rink, and as you skate on it, uh, you, the, it's regular skates. You cut into it just like you would ice, but it's self-healing. It, it actually covers itself and there's no Zamboni needed. Uh, what you do is uh, you vacuum it, you keep it clean, and they say the life expectancy of the rink itself is about 15 to 18 years. Uh, what I liked the most about it was uh, we don't have that large refrigeration requirement that is a heavy burden on the utility system and the uh, wallet of the town. So there will be no cost as far as the operation uh, once we purchase the, uh, the rink itself. So uh, very excited about that. We were able to buy an all-inclusive. Uh, I think we got about 108 pair of skates and uh, the little uh, things vacuum. to help. Well, oh, the vacuum. Oh, but, and the... Uh, there's some little uh, uh, things they use. They almost look like walkers for the children to use. And those, I mean, so it's an all-inclusive. Uh, we're very excited about this. Uh, we're going to be uh, hopefully putting it up right after Thanksgiving and following through the holiday season uh, and then probably mid to late January we'll, we'll take it up and put it in storage and we'll bring it back out every year as part of our holiday uh, season. Uh, to uh, Well and hopefully just like the Christmas parade and Halloween in the park and the tree lighting ceremony, it creates memories for our families and for generations. Um, of families here in the town of Smyrna. So I'm really looking forward to um, the atmosphere this is going to create down here. And I'm very excited that it checks off something on the town manager's uh, performance appraisal. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but I'm sure there'll be something to take its place. Mm -hmm. um, another thing I want to talk about, we talked about the fire station and we talked about the new apparatus. Uh, we want to make the uh, citizens feel good about where we're going with our fire department. The chief and I and a couple of his employees and uh, Rex Gaither, our assistant town manager and finance director, I really needed Rex's input on this, but uh, we're actually adding on top of the new ladder truck that we just received, we'll be ordering and receiving over the next 24 months five new uh, trucks, one more ladder, uh, 
a service company and, uh, no, I'm sorry, two more ladders. It'd be two more ladders, two 2,000 gallon pump trucks and a service company. And uh, again, it goes back to that supply chain. It, we needed to get these ordered now because it will take 24 to 30 months to receive them. Uh, so we've got to be planning ahead and making sure that uh, we have the proper equipment to make sure that we can keep our community safe. So we're excited about that. That, that order has been placed. Now we talked a lot about road projects and there are gonna be ongoing road projects. As many of you know, most of our growth right now on the residential side is out in that uh, area between Rock Springs. I call it the pie wedge between Rock Springs and Amelville Road. Uh, which takes in Rocky Fork, Amable, Cooks Lane, Lee Road, those kind of things. We're seeing a lot of growth uh, over the next 24 months. Uh, we're going to be doing quite a bit of work in that area. Uh, in fact, I think we're going to be looking at about three to three and a half miles worth of work on those roads. A lot of those roads are two lane, uh, no shoulder county roads that we're going to be bringing up to standards of the town roads, adding some turn lanes adding some shoulders, uh, sidewalks, and those kind of things. So that work is, is forthcoming. Um, that'll be on Rocky Fork, Amelville, Lee Road, and Cooks Lane. You mentioned it a minute ago. Uh, there's some technology out there today. Some of you probably have seen it on the uh, flashing arrows uh, to give you some uh, cautionary turns uh, where we have you know, longer uh, green light uh, situations and stuff on some of our roads. Uh, Tom, remind me, I think we have 10 intersections. Is it closer to 15? We, we, we budgeted some money and we went out to bid uh, and told them to give us as many as they could for those, for those dollars. Uh, so those will actually be going in over the next probably six months. Uh, we should see some of those begin to uh, show up and hopefully that will help people be able to maneuver through the traffic uh, appropriately and uh, allow us to use some cautionary uh, turn lanes and those kind of things that typically would hold us up. So. Again, we're, we're very focused on the traffic movement. We're very focused on roads. Uh, we're very focused on getting uh, not only our new areas uh, supplied with utilities, but we're a very concentrated effort to come back into the older parts of town and upgrade, uh, for, mostly for fire flow. Uh, that's probably one of the biggest things we've been trying to make sure we meet. So those are a few of the things coming up. Uh, very excited about those. Uh, you know, at this time, Mayor, I'd you know, be just want to say thank you not only to our staff, to our council, to the community for the work that we get done. Uh, we just thank everybody for taking a few minutes and listening to you and I share some of the things we've been doing. So I'll turn it back over to you, Mayor. We've had an exciting year. We look forward to next year. I appreciate the trust of the citizens that they place in this town council to um, lead our community and hopefully the vision that we have is one that um, you're happy with and we'll continue to do that over the next year. I also want to say thank you to our employees and our team. You all do an amazing job on a daily basis and we can't tell you thank you enough. So um, thanks for the year that we've had and we look forward to the upcoming year. We do appreciate everybody uh, that's made this possible. We appreciate all of you for coming out and being part of this today. Thank you.